Emulators are not just the way that allows us to revive forgotten emotions from the games we used to play. They are gaming industry legacy keepers providing us a platform to run old games when hardware's age is gone. In this video we're about to use some of these to check how they handle games from their platforms. However, not only the fact that games are running matters here, but the platform where they're about to be launched on. Hello and welcome back to Hardware Lab. After the release of Steam Deck in 2022, handhelds had become the best haven for playing prior generation games. Why? Well, that's pretty simple. Although old games have low poly models, low quality textures and low resolution in some cases, graphics still hold up well on a small display. Besides, the fact that you can play games no matter where you are means way more than graphics quality on these type of devices. As a representative of handhelds, we have ASUS ROG Li X, and in this video we're going to run games for free platforms such as PlayStation 2, Xbox Original and PSP. You may probably ask, why hasn't Steam Deck been chosen? It's better in many aspects. Even though we have a Steam Deck LCD, ASUS ROG LIX is equipped with 1080p screen and faster APU, which allows it to run games in higher resolution with decent frame rate. And yeah, this is not contradicting what was said before. It's worth mentioning that power PCs have several power modes to keep battery charge while playing on the go. We're talking of silent, performance and turbo modes with 13, 17 and 25 watts respectively. Running the tests, a silent mode with CPU boost set to off was prioritized. However, in some cases we were forced to use turbo mode with CPU boost set to on. When it comes to emulation, some games demand more compute power, especially on CPU. This is why CPU boost is a mandatory for CPU intensive projects to get proper frame rate. As for emulators, we have chosen PPSSPP for PSP games, XMO for Xbox Original ones and PCSX2 for PS2 projects. Xbox 360 and PS3 emulators haven't been taken due to obvious emulation complexity. The software is still in development and we hope that one day it will be more playable. We haven't planned to demonstrate the preparation process of the emulators in this video, but if you wanna see how to do that in detail, let us know in the comments. Before going to a test section, there are some things that should be mentioned. Since the original platforms run games in low resolution, we set resolution multiplier coefficients so that it matched or was as close as possible to 9020 by 1080 which is a native resolution of ASUS ROG Li display. The resolution multipliers are going to be shown after each test. The point of this material is to demonstrate general game performance in terms of is it playable or not and some drops that can occur while playing games. Console games are mostly locked on 30 or 60 FPS and the goal here is not to get super accurate metrics but just to see if the emulators can provide gameplay fluidity and acceptable response on portable devices with low TGP. The first game on the testing is God of War Ghost of Sparta, running on PPSSPP emulator, and the metrics speak for themselves here. Z1 Extreme is showing flawless from RAID with no issues, consuming only 9 watts with limit set to 13. Resolution here is 9020 by 1088 given by 4x coefficient applied to native PSP resolution, 480 by 272 As for the other emulators, stutters can occur periodically, but most of the time the gameplay is as smooth as butter with 60 FPS.
GTA Vice City Stories is unfortunately locked on 30 FPS, which is a bummer. However, the frame rate remains quite stable while gameplay in a silent mode with 30 watts limit. The only downside of running this game is stutters that occur on a regular basis. Resolution is set to 9020 by 1088 with extra MSAA 4X that gives a crystal clear image on 1080p screen of ROG Li. Splinter Cell Essentials with 60 FPS patch runs perfectly on the PSP emulator and again in the silent mode. The resolution is still 1088p and the image looks sharp even without any extra anti-aliasing algorithms. God of War 2 feels impeccable on PCSX with 3x coefficient, which gives a 1080p-ish image. Users can expect a smooth 60fps experience playing in the silent mode with the long living battery. Ratchet & Clank 3 is an odd game when it comes to performance metrics, since the frame rate here is somehow locked on 50 FPS. In spite of that, the game plays very smoothly with the resolution around 1080p in the silent mode.
Shadow of the Colossus is one of the toughest games to emulate. Compared to the other games from the list, this project has been benchmarked in three modes. Silent, Turbo and Turbo with CPU boss set to on. In 1080p around resolution with 60fps lock, we get severe drops to stuttery 20s in the silent mode. Switching to the turbo mode stabilizes average frame rate, but barely affecting 1% metric, which remains in 20 to 30 FPS. Emulation here is very demanding and requires using CPU boost for smooth gameplay, which drains battery charge out aggressively. The first game tested on XEMU is Jet Set Radio Future. There is not much to say about it, because the game runs perfectly with 60 stable FPS in 3x scaling, which gives a 9020 by 1440 image. In case of some drops while bouncing around crowded stops in the city, CPU boost usage might be advisable. Ghost Recon is a CPU demanding project, and just like in case with Shadow of the Colossus, CPU boost is a mandatory here if you wanna get kind of a comfortable game process. The game has been tested in two modes, since using a higher thermal profile itself doesn't make any difference, and CPU boost plays its role like a cure for the frame rate. Resolution multiplier here is set on 2x, which means a 1280 by 960 image. Playable with CPU boost set to on. The last game tested is Gun Valkyrie, resolution multiplier 4x with a 2560 by 1920 image and 60 stable FPS provides solid gameplay in the silent mode for those who are interested.
As you could see here, beating games from some of the old platforms is quite doable now, even on portable devices. Many of them are more than playable even on 9 to 13 watts power modes, so you can keep a large time killers library on your device with the ability to play hours and hours anywhere. Having the knowledge about performance, you can scale it on other handhelds on the market. We hope this video was useful, and if so, please hit the like button to express your appreciation to what we do here. Also, don't forget about the subscribe button to boost our motivation to keep up with our new content. And as always, stay up to date with HL.